Hi, everyone, and welcome to another My Kids Locker COVID-19 Ed podcast episode. Well, we are in June, and for the next several Mondays, we have a special guest. Christy Watson is an author. She lives in British Columbia, Canada, and she has written many books. Some of the books include Living Rough, Benched, Epic Fail, On Cue, Room 555, and Locked Up. There are more, but the list just keeps going on. Well, we're going to be starting a series with her sharing her chapters from a book called Living Rough. She's going to be sharing chapter one, two, and three. It's a great opportunity for you to kick back, grab yourself a cup of tea, or maybe just go for a walk and listen to her chapter one, two, and three. We are so lucky to have her as a special guest, and I hope that you enjoy the next several Mondays. Well, without further ado, here is Christy Watson sharing chapter one of Living Rough. Living Rough by Christy Watson. Chapter one. I didn't need a weatherman to tell me what to expect when I woke up. It was painfully clear. Well, the skies weren't clear. What was clear? That it was going to be another crappy day. How can it rain for 20 days straight? I'd scrubbed last night, so I pulled my pants and shirt on. My clothes smelled musty and felt damp. I figured some fresh air would help, and I wanted to break my record for speed walking to school. My best time was 18 minutes. Rain is a good motivator for speed, so I grabbed my felt hat and headed out into the cool, wet morning. I wolfed down a granola bar as I started up the hill. I'd grabbed it from the breakfast program at school. No one wanted to call it what it was, a meal program for loser poor kids. I always arrived early so I could raid the food and clear out before the halls got busy. But the risk of going that early was that I was usually the only kid in the joint, and the staff would try to have a heart-to-heart with me every day. Like my life changed between Monday and Tuesday. I'm only 15, after all. I wasn't in the mood for conversation, so I was happy to find the room was empty. I figured it was safe to slip in and grab an apple from the food table. Sour juice ran down my chin as I bit into the green fruit. I'd just pocketed a peanut butter granola bar when I heard voices. That was my cue to clear out of there. I met one of the ladies that supervised the room on her way in. Hi, Edgar, she said. I thought you might like this raincoat. She held out a fluorescent blue jacket. I shook my head and bolted down the hall. Couldn't she see I was a trench coat kind of guy? As I rounded the corner by the library, I bumped into our principal. Mr. Reed, he said. He had a habit of calling students by their last name. I had often thought of calling him Pete to be funny, but I never quite got the courage. Hi, Mr. Johnson. Listen, I'm glad I ran into you, he continued. I was wondering if you could do the school a favor. I don't know why he talked about the school like it was a person. Could you show a new student around before the first bell? She arrived yesterday from the Ukraine and doesn't speak much English. Uh, I guess. I tried to sound noncommittal. Maybe he'd come to his senses and find a keener, like someone from student council. But he didn't notice my lack of enthusiasm. He gestured for me to follow him toward the office. As I walked behind Mr. Johnson, I counted the tiles on the floor. There were 41 linoleum squares from the breakfast room to the office. Counting helped my nerves to chill. Ina, please meet Mr. Reed said Mr. Johnson as he reached the foyer. I couldn't believe he'd used her first name. Her last name must be a beast to pronounce. I kept my gaze toward the floor while I thought about how I could get out of this. Then a hand came into my view. The nails were spattered with green polish and were bitten to the quick. This girl was a chewer. Hey, maybe she'd be all right. I risked looking up at her. Hello, I'm Ina, she said. Her accent was as thick as the mascara she darkened her lashes with. Eyeliner brightened her hazel eyes. Her lower lip quivered. 
She was obviously scared to death. I'd be traumatized, too, if I didn't know the language. I'm Edgar, I said, as I shook her hand. I knew how to be polite. She smiled with what looked like relief. She didn't want to take the tour any more than I wanted to give it. Mr. Johnson was already retreating down the hall. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Welcome, Ina. Enjoy your day at Crescent High, he called over his shoulder. You're welcome, she answered. I smiled. Well, this is the office. Come here when you need to use the phone. I gestured, making a phone call, and she smiled again. We headed in the direction Mr. Johnson had disappeared. The hall started to fill with students. As usual, most of them seemed intent on staring. I was used to the looks. I'm not sure how Ina was handling their glares. Two girls from grade nine whispered and giggled as they looked our way. I moved toward them, giving them a dirty look. Before I said anything, they clammed up and took off. Thank you, said Ina. Hey, no problem, I replied, as I stopped by the orange doors at the end of the hall. This is the gym, place for exercise. I did two jumping jacks. Ina seemed to understand. Next stop would be the cafeteria, and then I'd need to help her find her class. Bo, what's up? My only friend sauntered toward us. A book spilled from the pile in his arms onto the floor. Ina picked it up and passed it back to him. He gave her a goofy grin. I looked Ina over again. She was kind of pretty. As she turned my way, I felt my cheeks get warm. I looked back at my buddy and sputtered, Ben, meet Ina. Ina, Ben. I like your name, Ben said. It's cool. How come I haven't seen you around before? Whose classes are you in? Are you in our grade? Ben was stringing the sentences together too fast for her to keep up. He probably lost her at, I like. Whoa, slow down, I said out loud. Ben looked at me, then back at her. Ina scrunched up her eyebrows and seemed to be trying to piece together a response. Grade, uh, grade ten, she finally answered. Maybe she knew more English than I realized. As we headed toward the cafeteria, Ben followed a few paces behind, checking out her skirt. He gave me a thumbs up out of Ina's range of vision. This is the cafeteria, but the food is bad, I plugged my nose. You given a tour? Ben asked. Yeah, Johnson cornered me. What could I do? Told you you should come to my place before school. You get here too early. I'd say that'll teach you, but this time you lucked out. Ben chuckled as he headed to his locker. It was nearly time for the bell. Can I see your schedule? I asked Ina. She looked confused. I pointed at the paper in her hand. She passed it to me, and I scanned the sheet. Her first block was English in room 203. My class was across the hall, so that made it easy. I could meet her at the bell to escort her to her second block. That's when she had science in the lab downstairs. Poor girl, she'll never know what hit her. Science is okay, but Mr. Rich has no ideas how to teach teens. Frogs he gets. Students make no sense to him. Before lunch, Ina's class would be gym. It seemed straightforward enough. I could handle helping her to get to her classes. As the bell rang, a look of terror came over Ina's face. She bolted toward the office. In seconds, she was lost in a sea of students. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's chapter on Living Rough. Chapter 1 by Christy Watson. If you want to check her out and learn more about her books, you can go to goodreads.com and put in her name, Christy Watson, and you'll get to learn more about her young adult poetry and children's books that she has available for her, for yourself and your family. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and until next time, remember, less screens, listen, create, and innovate. Until next time, keep safe. Bye.